welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. Uh, back at it again, we've got astro weather. So happy Sunday. Hopefully everybody's doing well and you're ready to kind of get your week started. Uh, big, big themes of the week. First of all, happy new moon. Those of you guys who are still celebrating, um, if you're still wanting to set intentions, there is still plenty of time. Actually, today is not, not a bad day to do that. You've got some nice aspects between this uh, new moon that's still kind of hanging around and Jupiter and Chiron. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but we're going to be talking about the astrology for the next week. So this is going to be for January 22nd through January the 29th, 2023. Uh, welcome back. If you guys are new subscribers, welcome. Um, if you're not, you should be subscribing. <laughs> do me a favor, hit the button below, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment, let you know, let me know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's seen so much growth with the channel. So I just want to say a big thank you to the members and the subscribers. We're off to a, a really great start at the beginning of 2023. And I, I think maybe, I don't know about you, I noticed the shift like pretty significantly yesterday, right? When the moon was starting to kind of come out of that conjunction with Pluto. And then as soon as it moved into Aquarius, it literally felt kind of like a rebirth. I know that sounds weird, but it was kind of like the pressure just kind of relieved a little bit. Still got some stuff going on today. Obviously we have a Venus Saturn conjunction, um, but big, big news. Mars is direct, Mercury is direct. Yay, we're still in shadow, but that's okay. Um, and we're also going to be seeing that Venus is making her ingress into the sign of Pisces this week. So if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm gonna take you through the 12 signs and I will tell you uh, where Venus is kind of lighting up your chart for the next couple of weeks, uh, bringing you more sweetness, more blessings, and I'll be pulling a tarot card for each and every one of the 12 signs. Let's go ahead and get into it first with today, Sunday the 22nd. Um, obviously, today is a busy day, okay? Just so you guys know, we got a lot of stuff going on. Even though it's Sunday, quite a few aspects that are going on in the sky. So like I said, we're still in that new moon energy. Yesterday, we had the new moon in Aquarius at one degree, very close to Pluto. So it's promising something new, foreshadowing also Pluto's ingress into Aquarius here in just a few short months. Um, and Aquarius new moons are about getting out there, being weird, doing something different, focusing on our goals. Um, and in this case, it's really big because it's in a sextile to Jupiter. It's in a trine to Mars. So there's a lot of energy kind of behind uh, this particular new moon. If you guys didn't see my new moon video, check it out. There's one that's out. I think I talked about this on the horoscopes as well. Um, but we've got that new moon energy still vibing and something else that I'm kind of noticing Hello, let's get my marker. Something else that I'm kind of noticing is uh, Mercury is coming back for his third trine to the North Node. So today, fateful conversation, significant things that we're learning. Um, it can be very earthly, so practical, grounded, especially involving business, planning, strategizing, organizing. And at a nine, I guess the question is, what are you learning today? This is a really great day for learning and integrating to have more stability and focus in the future. Um, finally, I cannot wait to see Mercury leave its quincunx to Mars. It's been like this all week. Mercury, the mind in Capricorn, which is really focused and steadfast in being able to complete tasks and have kind of future planning, um, being on top of things, has just been in this really uncomfortable angle to Mars and it's felt like the mind and the drive as these two planets are waking up are just kind of grinding their gears. As these planets are stationing, I've cut my hand like three times, <laughs> like just twice in the last day. So one of, one of my hands is definitely like, okay, I've had enough of whatever's going on in the skies. Um, but yeah, there, there is some um, sharpness to words, to um, movement, to communication. So just be mindful that's still kind of hanging out in the skies. But as Mercury now um, is going to be moving forward, now that he's done with his retrograde, we're going to start to kind of lose that aspect. Um, we are also going to see um, in the morning, early in the morning, depending on what time you're up, because the moon's in Aquarius, one of the first aspects it's going to make after the new moon is it makes a square to the nodes of fate. So the nodes are connected to the moon. They talk about where we are going for soul growth, what is unexplored, what's new, north node, and the south node, what's familiar territory, what we're kind of clearing and we're moving away from. But it can also be super spiritual. So I don't always believe that the uh, all the all the bad press about the South Node. Um, but when planets square the nodes, this is when we see karmic things happen. So the moon can talk about moods. It can talk about 
events that are going on out in the world, especially in the sign of Aquarius, politics, uh, global things, humanitarian, you know, efforts, things of that nature. Um, and it's really important to pay attention to just what the moon is out there, like what the vibe is, especially with the moon in Aquarius, what we're feeling. And a lot of people have been saying to me over the last couple of days, as we were coming into Aquarius season, they're like, I feel like something really big is coming. I feel like a change is coming. Is it the new moon? Maybe. Was it the Venus Saturn conjunction that was brewing? Maybe. But I think that um, we're coming into that halfway point. If you guys think back to uh, this last year, right? We had eclipses that started, um, or not started, started at the end of 2021, but we had eclipses in Scorpio and, and Taurus. So naturally, when we get into Aquarius season, we are kind of halfway um, from the eclipses that we had in the fall of 2022, and we're halfway to the new eclipses that are going to be coming in the spring. And this kind of shows you where all this Aquarius energy is coming into friction with the nodes and also Uranus. So we're going to be looking at uh, collective goals. We're looking at friendships. We're looking at the future, we're looking at the internet, we're looking at politics and how it's actually at a turning point um, when it comes to money, resources, land, physicality, you know, health, bodies, all these things, tourist things. So um, we've already seen uh, Venus make her square to the nodes. Now we're going to see the moon make her square early this morning. So you might miss it. Um, but you're not going to miss some of the other transits that are going to take, take place after this. Just know that when planets square the nodes, karmic events take place. Um, and the moon in Aquarius says we need to be more free thinking, kind of detached, a little bit more abstract whenever it comes to our emotions and who we're connecting with out in the world. Shortly after that square, then we see the moon build into a square with Uranus. And so that can be a little bit emotionally unnerving. There can be some tension. We can have some like shorter kind of tempers. People can be a little bit more emotionally sensitive. Um, and this does kind of seem to suggest that you know, we might, we might have a little bit of emotional upheaval. With, with this many planets in Aquarius, it's like coming together and um, focusing on the group or focusing on goals or what we're doing with others. So we might feel today that there's a lot of like running around and having to um, adjust, I guess the word would be adjust when you see planet square the nodes and square Uranus, um, to what works for everybody. So you might have plans today where somebody's like, look, I need more time. It doesn't work for me, you know, meeting you for lunch at, at this time, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you're like, okay, cool, you know, I have to adjust some things, it's not ideal, but whatever we gotta do if that's gonna make everybody happy. So today's kind of like a team effort kind of day, right? Um, but watch with the moon square Uranus, people can get a little uh, touchy, a little temperamental. And the, um, I'm not gonna say long awaited, but I would say the infamous Venus-Saturn conjunction is taking place. I did a video on that, I talked about that in this last week, how, you know, to, to be point blank in between the eyes, a lot of people can be feeling not so thrilled with relationships or financial matters or there is some feeling of sacrifice or what you give or what you're willing to do for what or who you love. Um, certainly Saturn does deal with boundaries, limitations. It's kind of like the line. So some of us may feel like there are events that take place today, maybe even into tomorrow. That's like, that's it. This happened. I'm done. You know, that's, that's my limit. Um, I can't, you know, be friends with that person anymore, or I, you know, I'm getting off the social media platform, or we're, we're at a turning point in this relationship. Now, for some, um, it can materialize as like a um, commitment and getting more serious about a relationship. So it can also be uh, sprinkled with commitments and proposals and plans for the future. Um, but I think at a 24, it's really kind of touching on where um, there is some disappointment of um, Venus related things where something doesn't meet our expectations or somebody fails to show up or something disappears. Um, and we're like, where did it go? How, you know, how disheartening that this happened. Um, so yeah, if you're a Venus based chart, like a Taurus or a Libra rising sun, you guys might feel the pinch of this a little bit more, but those of you guys who are Capricorn and Aquarius charts, uh, the Venus conjunction actually ain't, ain't too bad for you guys, but there, there may be some disappointments in terms of relationships today. So just try to keep that in mind and um, be mindful about um, how you're responding to when people go their own way. I mean, Aquarius literally needs to go its own way. So there can be disappointment in regards to thinking you're going to be uh, meeting a group goal or connecting with other people and just plans. They just don't, they just don't align. Um, that can also be serious love matters though. So there can be really significant heart to heart conversations and 
uh, discussions, especially as we go through the day, we're seeing the moon get closer and closer to Venus, although that's not really going to be conjuncting until uh, overnight, but still it's, it's, it's getting there. And I guess another big thing that's happening today is Uranus comes back online. Uranus goes direct. It's been stationing these last few days. When a, an outer planet goes direct, um, we, we definitely feel that energy out in the world. Uranus rules upheaval and rebellion and uh, revolution. Um, it's about pushing back against the system, doing things your own way. Um, and it is about electricity. It's about the internet, um, these internet glitches uh, that I've heard a lot of people talking about, um, the banking issue that we had at Bank of America this last week. It's literally Uranus and Taurus, right? Taurus is about money, it's about food, it's about the markets, it can be about the earth. So might wanna be on lookout for some really significant weather in this next week, um, both because we're gonna see uh, quite, a, quite a bit of energy um, with uh, Venus going into Pisces and planets that are gonna be approaching Neptune. So we could see some storms, especially as the moon is going through like Pisces or um, Gemini later this week. But what happens when it goes direct, it's kind of zippy, right? There can be a sense of just shocks and things happening that really takes everybody by surprise. So um, Taurus being Earth, so that's why I said natural disasters, earthquakes, things that involve um, electricity and towers and stuff, but also money because it's out of 14 degrees. So it can be about money or food or something in regards to the banking and the financial systems, which I think we're gonna hear more about, especially as planets in Aquarius are coming to square Uranus. So we're gonna be seeing that throughout this cycle here in the next week or two. Um, just a note to those of you guys who are like around 14 and 24 degrees of the fixed signs, okay? so. If you have 14 or 24, round up or down about a degree um, of the fixed sign. So Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, uh, hold on to your shorts, okay? Because these, uh, these conjunctions between Saturn and Venus at 24 and also Uranus, which is going to be waking up at 14, this will have an impact in your chart and there can be some tension. You might feel a little bit of that tension um, over the next couple of days. So. Sunday's like a day that you want to kind of cut loose, but it just, I don't know. To me, it feels like things, things feel a little discombobulated to me personally. So we'll see. Let me know. Let me know how your Sunday goes. Did everything go according to plan? Uh, this is now going to lead us to Monday, um, and we're going to get to the 23rd. Um, obviously, coming into the early morning, very early, the moon will come into conjunction with Saturn. So that's going to be probably a lot of us are still sleeping here in the States. Um, but as we're waking up, the moon is coming into conjunction uh, with Saturn and Venus. OK, so the moon is really feeling that emotional heaviness. I'm wondering if there's just like some stuff going on in terms of like the futures on Sunday for the stock market on Monday morning. And uh, we're hearing about where there's going to be uh, shortages or where there's going to be um, some disappointing financial news, disappointing numbers. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff that I saw over the last month or two is happening. We're hearing lots of um, big business, larger companies, especially in the tech world that are going through um, job cuts. So I think we might hear more about that and just some really difficult numbers in terms of um, performance for some companies. But as we're waking up in the morning when Venus and Saturn come into conjunction, it may feel a little bit more like um, like serious. The mood might be a little bit more serious. That's kind of the, the vibe that I'm getting as uh, the moon crosses Venus and Saturn. So I'm curious, I'm watching, I'm gonna see what's going on in the markets on Monday morning. Um, now, then we're gonna see later in the day, the moon is going to ingress into Pisces. Now that's gonna happen right around afternoon, depending on where you are in uh, which time zone. But um, in the afternoon, the moon moves into Pisces totally changes the mood. Then we're really focusing on Neptune. Um, Pisces is emotional, sentimental, sensitive. It's a water sign. So we might feel like there's a little bit of like an emotional reprieve, especially finally coming out of that conjunction between um, both Venus and the moon with Saturn. So we get, we kind of, we kind of calm down a little bit here. I'm, I'm really liking also as the moon goes through Pisces, it's going to start making some really nice aspects both to Mercury as well as uh, placements in Taurus. Um, so that ingress will happen in the afternoon. As we get into the evening, the moon in Pisces will try in the south node, but that's looking actually like it's gonna happen over the evening. Yeah. 
And the moon trying the south node is, is definitely releasing letting go. Um, and so I could see a lot of people being like, I just need to sleep this off. I need to rest. You know, we feel like that more when we have the moon in Pisces. I need alone time to process and recover, especially if you've been having some financial or some relationship woes. Now, what I'm not wild about is on Monday night, the moon, even though it's in a trine to the south node, which is like getting your feelings out, clearing it out, you know, being, being in your feels, the moon's going to square Mars. And it does make me feel like there is some agitation. It does make me feel like there can be some issues also with sleep. We might have some sleep issues um, and be feeling like we're a little restless. So we're wanting to rest, but there's a lot going on on our mind. And we're just like, you know, we might have motor brain um, on Monday night. So then this leads into Tuesday, the 24th, and this is a better day, to be honest with you. We're going to see the sun in Aquarius come into a sextile with Jupiter in Aries. So we've got the moon, at a, the, excuse me, the sun at a four of Aquarius, and it's in a sextile with Jupiter. So we've got air and fire working together, more positivity, more movement. We're pushing forward. We may not see that more until the moon um, moves into Aries, which is going to be happening closer to Wednesday. But we'll have this nice aspect between the sun and Jupiter, which is going to enhance energy, optimism, motivation, joy. Um, so there's a there's like a turning point that's going to start to happen on Wednesday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday evening, the 24th. So we keep moving through that period and then we get to the 25th in the morning. And one thing that you're going to see is early in the AM, the moon is going to come into conjunction with Neptune. So that's happening while most of us are sleeping. Can be really great for dreams. There can be some significant breakthroughs also in like meditation or spiritual work, spiritual studies. Um, so if you're wanting to like meditate or if you're wanting to uh, do any kind of like psychic or intuitive development work, um, it would be wonderful to do that on the evening of the 24th and maybe even do a little bit of that on the morning um, of the 25th on Wednesday morning. Being by water, soaking, detoxing, that stuff is really good for the moon in Pisces. Um, so then we're going to see the moon come out of this conjunction with Neptune. And in the afternoon, we are going to see the moon ingress into Aries. And it's like a night and day energy. When you feel the moon leave Pisces and go into Aries, it's like somebody turns the light on. So in the afternoon on the 25th, this will be Wednesday, the moon ingresses into Aries. And like the, the mood picks up significantly, primarily because we're going to see that um, both the moon and Jupiter are going to be in conjunction. So there's more optimism, there's more independence, we're feeling a little bit more feisty and spicy, um, but also because we're gonna start seeing this sextile get picked up by the um, moon now coming into a sextile with the sun. So that's gonna have us feeling like we're uh, more productive, we're getting things done, right? And um, I also really, really like on the 25th that um, the moon's going to start coming into a sextile with Mars. That's important because the moon, when it's in Aries, we're looking at what's going on with Mars. So that's going to kind of like start off on the 25th and it's going clear into the 26th. Now on the 26th in the morning, we're going to see the moon start making its sextile uh, officially to Mars. So we're feeling independent, active, motivated, um, and like we can get stuff done. So I'm liking like the sun and the moon sextiling each other, you know, we're kind of proactively being more independent, focusing on our goals, the moon sextile Mars, we're walking the walk, talking the talk. Um, and we're also going to be seeing that on the same day, um, the moon is coming into conjunction with Chiron. So we're aware of our wounds. Um, we're aware of pain. We're aware of what we need to be working on within ourselves. And what you want to watch for it is as the moon is coming into conjunction with Chiron, it will square Mercury. And I've seen this square a couple times throughout the Mercury retrograde whenever um, it makes a, a square to Chiron. There's definitely some hurt feelings, difficult words, things like that. So be mindful in the 26th that even though Venus is changing signs, there is an opportunity to have some difficult conversations or say some things that can kind of upset other people. Okay, so just... Just keep that in mind. Uh, keep, keep the ego in check with the sun sextile Jupiter. Um, all right, so at least through the moon conjunction to Chiron and Aries, we're able to talk about and discuss what hurts us and what our problems are and we can kind of problem solve, but it's 
something about that square. That square is going to lead into the 27th too. So yeah, the 26th and the 27th, you could be feeling that. All right, so let's now get into Friday, which will be the 27th. And uh, Friday is when we see um, finally Venus is going to be moving. So that actually looks like it's going to happen on Friday. Venus moves into Pisces the mutable water sign, exaltation for Venus. So wonderful placement for Venus to be, especially considering that the North Node is ruled by Venus. So it's gonna be easier to see Venus get out of all of these um, conjunctions and Aquarius placements and squares to the nodes. Like she's gonna calm down a little bit. So relationships um, and harmony in, in regards to relationships with others, it's looking, it's looking a lot better come the end of the week. Um, on Friday, that moon in Aries is going to be sextiling Saturn in Aquarius. So we've got action, independence, and motivation um, coming into alignment with focus and goal setting. So we're feeling really optimistic about what we're setting out to achieve. I like that. Uh, we're also going to be seeing that the moon eventually, this will be in the PM hours, um, it's going to start coming into a square with Pluto. So as the moon grows and goes through the sign of Aries, it's going to square Pluto and that square is going to be happening uh, in the morning, early afternoon morning, right, when it, right about the time it hits 26 degrees, you'll start feeling that. So central time, it's about noon. Um, and on the East Coast, that's going to be about 1 p.m. Uh, but as the moon and uh, Pluto are squaring, there can be some intense emotional power struggles. So just be mindful for that, that that can be kind of taking place. In the background though, keep in mind, Mars is still sextile Jupiter, so we're just like chugging along. It's like, nope, we're reminding ourselves what we're doing, what we're working on, what we're sticking with. And when the moon is in Aries, we have to be more so self-focused. Yes, people can be impulsive, they can be intense, they can be angry, um, but we want to try to work more with these aspects between the sun, Jupiter, and Mars and stay in our own lane Stay focused, stay motivated. Don't allow ourselves to kind of blow our, blow our top, getting angry with that moon square. In the evening, the moon will ingress into Taurus on uh, Friday. So things kind of calm down a little bit. Moon's more stable in Taurus. It really likes it there um, because the moon is exalted in this sign. So it's more peaceful. It's kind of calmer, it's seeking comfort. And right off the bat, when it moves into Taurus, we're going to feel um, the loveliness of Venus and Pisces because the moon is ruled by um, the moon in Taurus is ruled by Venus. So we see a sextile between Venus and the moon. So Friday night, I don't know, is Friday night a date night? I think it might be. Uh, I think it's a it's a wonderful time to kind of snuggle up, get comfy. Um, you may be having with Venus and Pisces more of an interest in staying in, watching movies, painting, right? Um, doing something romantic, going for a walk by water. Um, so I really like Friday night for kind of just easing the, <laughs> easing the week up a little bit and kind of coming off of some of these more difficult aspects. Um, what I'm also noticing is that as we get into Saturday, so let's take the moon now into the 28th. Um, the moon in Taurus is, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to start squaring the sun and conjuncting the north node. So this is a day to watch Sunday, a little disjointed, okay? So when the, when the sun and the moon are in a square to each other, well, too big of an arrow, there we go. When the sun and the moon are in a square to each other, it almost feels like disjointed, like things aren't going according to plan. And this will be the very first uh, quarter square since the new moon. So we had that new moon yesterday, a week from now, boom, moon goes into Taurus, touches his own node. Yes, we're focusing on stability, money, resources, pleasure, but it's squaring the sun. So once again, group mind doesn't really resonate with what makes sense in terms of security or financially, or, you know, people aren't going to agree on what we want, what they want to eat, how they want to spend money. There's going to be some friction. Um, the second aspect that the moon is then going to make on Sunday is then it's going to come into a conjunction um, with Uranus. So it's going to cross the North Node in the morning. Pay attention to what you're doing Sunday more, uh, excuse me, Saturday morning um, and what's kind of going on in your life. Like, how are you focusing on getting grounded? How are you finding stability? Do you need to go and do some yoga? Put your feet in the grass. Do you need to work with uh, crystals? 
Um, do you do some gardening, right? Do something to ground your energy out because to me it seems a little stifling. Same day, we've got the sun also in a square to the node. So this is some complex astrology. Just the sun square, the moon in these degrees is kind of like gears grinding because the fixed signs don't want to change. So you're going to see wherever Aquarius is in your chart, wherever Taurus is in your chart, they're both like standing there and they have like their arms folded and they're like, no, not bo both things cannot coexist. <laughs> and you're going to definitely see that kind of breakdown happen. Um, these are financial signs, so this can also be more financial stuff that's kind of coming out in the world. And I think it's interesting to see the moon touch its own nodes, which is saying focus on security, stability, money, and resources. And then we see the sun square the nodes as well at an eight about breakdown, change, transformation, rebirth. I mean, this is a Scorpio degree. So shift is very much hitting the fan with some of these conjunctions and these squares. Um... And then we are going to see the moon continue to keep moving forward uh, through Saturday and it's going to come into conjunction with Uranus and it's going to kind of get a little riled up and have some, some feathers ruffled in the evening. So make your plans for Friday night. Saturday is looking a little, a little buck wild um, and definitely can be a little bit of an adjustment period, but I, I'm not crazy about the North node on the moon with the sun square, the nodes, because I feel like there's what, um, Aquarius wants us to do. And it wants us to, um, maybe sacrifice because it's in a Saturn sign or it's wanting us to, um, rebel against. And there's going to be some friction between, um, <laughs> groups of people, uh, between vibes and reality. Like it's a day to, go deeper into the Taurus stuff and kind of go, no, there's a need for me to ground my energy out and like not get kind of caught up in the chaos uh, that's going on in the world or that's going on just uh, around you. So really ground out on, on Saturday. <laughs> I'm curious to see what happens with that square, to be honest with you, because eights are some difficult energies. So fateful day on top, just because the moon's conjunct the nodes, but especially because the sun is going to square. Um, if you have planets around seven, eight, nine, degrees of the fixed signs, okay, you're going to feel this. Yeah, I, we could take it all the way up to, to, you know, 14, 15, but specifically seven, eight, nine degrees. And if you have degrees, like a sun, moon, or rising there, if you want, come back, let us know what happened on the comments. I'm curious to see what happens on Saturday in particular, because it looks like there's going to be one thing that ends to make way for something new that's going to be um, being built or coming, kind of coming into reality. So faithful day on Saturday, um, this takes us now into Sunday. So this will be next week when we are having the next astral weather. Oh, and one more thing I guess I should mention. Well, this is really going to be happening, I think, on Sunday. Yeah, it'll be happening either overnight or it'll be Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday morning. Um, something about that Saturday night when the moon comes into conjunction with Uranus, which is emotionally unsettling, right? So you might be like, oh my God, I lost my wallet. Uh, oh my goodness, you know, I am really stressed about resources or, you know, I'm not adjusting well to something or I'm having some like emotional kind of stuff coming up. Mercury's coming into the trine with Uranus. So this is the third time that we've seen this through the ret retrograde period. So we saw it, saw it pre-shadow, uh, retrograde, and now post. And what Mercury has been doing is as it's been going retrograde, Capricorn, it's been making trines to the North Node, helping us get into alignment with our true value, learning how to take um, the necessary steps forward and be responsible for figuring out our values. And also, I think a lot of that's about integrity. Um, and then we saw Mercury come into a trine with Uranus where we're like, we need to communicate where we need to do things differently. I really like this retrograde, even though it's it's been challenging. I like the fact that it's been a lot of like problem solving and going back to the drawing table and being like, this isn't working. How can we make something work better? Um, so now we're at the tail end of whatever you've been working out in Capricorn for the better part of the last month or so. And we have one more kind of like ingenious, amazing, opportune days on the 29th where there can be conversations that lead to having a breakthrough right there can be like light bulb moments that are also going on uh, for you as well now granted that's technically going to be kind of playing out all day but if you're somebody who's a night owl and you're awake really 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 late on saturday night going into sunday morning um, and you have ideas you want to write something down you have a prominent dream or a vision like get it down on paper 
because Mercury is going to help some of you guys come up with just something that's going to be amazing. Um, so that's the third time when we see that trine. And as we go deeper into the day on Sunday, we start to see the sun form a trine with Mars an air trine. So nine degrees sun in Aquarius, nine degrees Mars in Gemini. Yay, Mars is moving. Finally left that eight degree. Um, so it's now starting to kind of pick up speed. Um, when the sun, which is more about our uh, joy, our purpose, our dedication, our happiness, our confidence um, comes into a positive aspect with Mars, we're feeling good about putting something together and it's an air trine. So we're having to talk about it, share, move around a little bit. Um, Sunday is a really wonderful day for just like really getting active and sharing and being with other people. I think it's going to be a wonder, wonderful day for that. Even in spite of the fact that um, we will see later on Sunday, the moon will come into a square with Saturn. So that's going to be happening kind of in the afternoon hours, right around the time the moon's hitting 24 uh, degrees of Taurus, it is coming into a square with Saturn. Um, but it will also be met later in the day with a trine to Pluto. So uh, for the most part, like I said, weekend plans, Friday, that's really when you wanna do that. Um, use Tuesday, and I would also encourage you to use Saturday as productive days to get things done. You're gonna be really able to work with those fire and air elements to just kind of get, get cooking with gas. Um, but yeah, let me know how, how this kind of plays out for you guys. I wanna talk a little bit before we wrap up about um, Venus going into, uh, going into Pisces. I'll do a video probably on this uh, more in depth later this week, but Venus moving into this sign is amazing because Venus is the ruler of the North Node, right? So the North Node in Taurus, Taurus is a Venusian sign. Um, and Venus in Pisces has like a Neptune twist. So it's going to put an emphasis and a focus throughout Venus's transit this month on design, art, magic, imagination, spirituality, beauty, music, film, photography, the list goes on. So it's in um, Venus's exaltation. So if you have a Venus in Pisces, you're getting ready to have your Venus return. If you have a uh, Pisces sun, moon, or rising, it's extra sweet for you. I think it's gonna be extra sweet for everyone, to be honest with you, because Venus has that connection to the North Node. And throughout this transit, and as we get other planets getting into Pisces as well, soon the sun will be there, Mercury will join. We're gonna start seeing planets in the sign of Pisces sextiling the North Node and Uranus and Taurus. Now, if you guys remember, Back in like March, February, March of uh, last year, 2022, we had a stellium of planets in Pisces. They all started coming into sextiles and with the North Node and with Uranus. Um, and it was almost like you're taking the dreams, the fantasy, the illusion, the prayers, the manifestation. And if you work with this sextile appropriately, it will help you envision all of the things that we're building and bringing into our reality um, this spring. So as Venus makes that sextile, we're planting seeds for physical manifestations that are going to be coming in Taurus season, all right, April and May. My advice is, especially when Venus starts making some nicer aspects, like not just uh, Venus moving into Pisces, but I'm um, liking like when Venus starts coming into a sextile with the North Node, and maybe we have like a trine from the moon, so like around February 2nd, um, awesome times for, for vision boards, for inspiration, for focusing on dreams, for manifestation, especially if you're wanting to manifest physical things, if you're manifesting abundance, health, if you're wanting to manifest more security, if you're trying to buy land, if you're trying to bring something into physical existence, if you're focusing on fertility, this is the time that you want to be doing this because you have some magical sextiles between Venus and the North Node, and then you're gonna see it some more when Venus comes into a sextile with Uranus, closer to about like the 7th and the 8th of February. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So it, sh she will be there for, for a couple of weeks. She's not gonna leave quite yet, so it's gonna be benefiting everybody. And know that Pisces is the 12th sign of the Zodiac. So it also has some kind of connection to 
what's metaphysical, what's spiritual, what is um, beyond what we can see, what's in higher realms, right? Angelic realms, if you believe in that stuff or the heavens, things that are getting ready to wrap up and also clear out. Um, and Pisces has connection to meditation, uh, healing studios, hospitals, um, prisons, mental health places. Um, but also I think of like um, ritual work, temples, um, private spas and uh, retreat centers and places where you can kind of go and like be with the goddess. So Venus energy is going to be very, very, very strong over the next two weeks. And I think it's going to bring everybody just a, a really well-deserved sense of sweetness. Um, and it's going to be really blessing everybody in a very big way. Um, so it's very important, like I said, if you're a Pisces sun, moon, or rising, you're going to be having a little bit of extra sweetness, maybe a little bit more love and beauty in your life. Um, and those of you guys who are Taurus or Libra risings, because Venus is your ruling planet, um, Venus changing signs is definitely going to bring, uh, it's going to bring you some blessings. But like I said, I think it's going to, I think it's going to do a little bit of something for everyone. And I observed some of these transits last year when there were things that were going on in, um, in, in March during Pisces season, the sextiles. And I was um, a, like blown away when May came, just how many physical things manifested that I was thinking about, dreaming about, and kind of like manifesting. So uh, really use this transit as an opportunity to be able to, to make magic happen. Obviously, Pisces is associated with the sea, um, and so it has connections to Neptune, which can be about um, divination, it can be about magic, it can be about cleanses and washes and detoxing and cleansing, especially because it's going to start coming into sextiles with Pluto. But it can also be about um, blessing things, anything that you want to bless or anything that you want to cleanse or pray for or protect. Um, and so if you want to get kind of witchy with it, you know, working with water can be wonderful, using like salt water for cleansing and purification um, and just taking baths or, or going to the spa and being able to kind of soak um, can be a wonderful way to kind of work with this energy in general. OK. All right. So let me take you guys through the 12 signs. I'm going to let you know exactly where this is going to be taking place for each and every one of you. Um, so as always, I'm a Western astrologer, so I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Western astrological uh, horoscopes. You're going to be wanting to listen for your ascendant sign and then your sun and then your moon. Your ascendant sign is going to be the nine o'clock hour. So find where Pisces is in your chart. That's where Venus is going to be transiting through. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you may be expecting from this particular transit. So let me take this back a couple days. <laughs> There we go. So we can see it. Okay. So, um, yeah, listen for your rising sign first, and I'm going to tell you where this is taking place. So let's go ahead and get started first with Aries and Aries rising. What's up, Aries? Hopefully you're doing well. Um, so we've got Venus that's moving into Pisces and it's going into your 12th house. Okay. 12th house is all about uh, spirituality. It can be about bed pleasure. So there can be a little bit more romance going on in your life right now. Um, and it can also be about just feeling like you're going and doing something where you're just connecting with the divine. So if you need to be in nature, if you feel like you need to be in a private space, if you need to be traveling, if you're wanting to uh, go and be at a spa, any of these things kind of make sense with Venus in the 12th house. Venus rules the seventh house of relationships and the second house of money and resources. So I could see you spending a little bit more money to have some alone time with your significant other, doing something romantic, getting away, uh, being closer to nature. Um, but it could also mean that you're just really enjoying indulging. You know, second house Venus can be food. So uh, having a fancy dinner at home and, you know, making somebody um, uh, dinner or breakfast in bed, right? Very kind of 12th house Venus theme. Uh, but great opportunities for romance, great opportunities for inspiration. And if you're looking to travel or even plan a trip, that can be a wonderful time for you to do that. Um, but enjoy the, the romantic options that you have behind the scenes with someone. If you are single, right, if you're single, this can be an indication where there is somebody who kind of comes in that has an interest in you, who uh, might be a little bit of a crush that you're not really aware of. Um, and somebody, somebody might let you in on uh, their, their interest for you. That is definitely possible. Let's see what the cards say. I get the 10 of coins. That's a great card. 
Uh, Ten of Coins, long-lasting opportunities for love and relationships. And it could be very whimsical, kind of fairy tale esque in the t in the twelfth house, especially as Venus is approaching Neptune. This can also be um, dreams for the future, dreams for long-lasting relationship, and kind of like storybook romance that you might have with somebody. Something that is super magical and like long-lasting. So you might be going through a period where you're manifesting or you're envisioning that that's coming in as well. Okay. Good luck, my Aries. For Taurus and Taurus rising, what's going on? You have your chart ruler, Venus, changing signs. So Venus is going to be moving into Pisces. It's going into your 11th house where she is bringing you all kinds of sweetness and blessings. Um, when it comes to parties, socializing, friends, um, and I think this is about also you, right? Because Venus is kind of archetypally your, your, little, uh, your little symbol in your chart. So wherever Venus goes, you have a tendency to follow. Good news may be coming in regards to friends. Uh, you may have people who also are willing to help you. So if you're in need in some way, friends are willing to help. So Venus rules your sixth house of servants and anything in regards to work or coworkers. And it also rules your first house of self. So if you're um, needing some assistance with a project, if you're looking to hire somebody, if you're looking to get a job, maybe you're looking for a recommendation for a new um, health practitioner, you may have a friend that says, hey, I know somebody, I'll connect you to them. They're hiring or they're just the person that you need to be talking to or you know, if you need an assistant or something, they're like, I've got you, how can I help? Equally, if you are going through a health-related issue, um, I could definitely see a friend stepping up and being willing to help you because Venus in the 11th could be a woman who's saying, what do you need? I'll help you, you know, I'll bring you some medication, I'll help you get better, um, whatever it is that you need because it's the, that combination of the first house and the sixth house. It may also mean that you're wanting to jump in and be of service to friends and collaborate and join and team up with people who wanna make a difference out in the world. Um, regardless, lots of love that's going to be coming in, especially with these sextiles to your ascendant. So watch out. You're going to definitely get some appreciation, some hugs, um, and people telling you just how amazing that you are. Oh, wow. So nine of swords is coming up. So I feel like, I feel like for you, it's interesting because there, there's so many planets moving through your 10th house right now, coming into the square with the nodes. And I can feel like there's this sense of you feeling like the world is on your shoulders, especially when it comes to work and responsibility. Um, and perhaps maybe creating lots of stress or creating uh, some dilemmas in terms of you feeling like you can kind of carry everything and get everything done. Um, this is a card that does talk about worrying about things that you cannot control. So if you're feeling like, oh my goodness, you know, I wasn't planning to have this hiccup at work or I wasn't planning to have this health issue or I wasn't planning to have this issue come up, um, you're going to have friends that are going to be like, it's fine. We've got you. What do you need? Just let me know how I can help, um, who are going to come to your rescue. No Taurus that as all these planets go through your 10th house here, um, there is a sense of, like I said, you just feeling like you have more responsibility on your shoulders and it can create some friction with relationships. So let other people help you, support you, and really opening up to others and letting them know if you're having a difficult time, okay? Good luck. For my Gemini and Gemini rising, you have got Venus going into Pisces. So it's moving into your natal 10th house. This is a wonderful transit. It's gonna bring career blessings. Um, so the 10th house is about work, superiors, your public image, Venus rules behind the scenes, 12th house things that are hidden. It also rules fifth house um, in regards to creativity and children and happiness, talent, joy, if you are a Gemini or Gemini rising that's been chugging away, just working at something, creating something, kind of just really giving a lot of love to something behind the scenes, now it's getting ready to be seen. So if you've been thinking about um, launching a business, if you've been working on a project, anything like that, it looks like it's getting ready to uh, become visible. Equally, if you're looking for a job in film, creativity, spirituality, mental health, or nonprofit, this is also a really good omen for you as Venus goes through your 10th house. Lots of love and um, recognition, but career blessing is really the big thing that I'm seeing here. 
And I feel like it's also something that's going to allow you to either work with creative energy or younger people, right? So it could be that as well. Um, but I'm loving Venus at the top part of your chart. And I really feel like it can be wonderful for you connecting with the right people who can help see, um, help you find your way through some, some career stuff right now. So if you're looking to find a job, you might get one. If you're looking to go through interviews, you might totally just like kill it. Um, and really impress people with your with your style or maybe with your charm, okay? Let's see what the cards say for you. Ooh, I love it, the Emperor. Especially because Mars, right? This is a card that's about Mars, but Mars is on your Ascendant. So you've got Mars in your first house, you're feeling like, okay, I'm ready to go, it's go time, and Venus in the 10th house is about um, really, really getting, um, getting along well with other people. And so the, the emperor card can be saying like pleasant relationships with bosses, superiors, husbands, fathers, uh, significant people in the workplace and really being seen as somebody who's really respected, right? You're going to see, especially as Saturn comes into Pisces here soon, that a lot of you guys are going to take on management roles or you're going to have more responsibility at work. And so I think that this is the precursor for that. You're just getting a lot of appreciation for what you've been doing, okay? And really handling business too. Good luck, Gemini. We've got Cancer and Cancer rising. We've got Venus that's moving into the sign of Pisces. She will be moving through your natal ninth house. And I, I like this transit for you, Cancer, because it, it is in a sister sign. So um, if you are a Cancer Sun, Moon, or Rising, this Venus transit will make a trine in some way. Um, water signs, water trines, emotional, cleansing, therapeutic, psychic, intuitive, um, especially for the Cancer Risings, because you're going to see Venus go through the ninth house where she's blessing you with opportunities for foreign travel, bringing you teachers, mentors, gurus, newfound faith, uh, opportunities for, for trips even, uh, pleasure trips, and learning more about culture. Um, and she will try in your ascendant if you're a Cancer rising, and she will also try in the south node. So to me, it seems like a renewal of faith, maybe, is kind of what's coming in. Um, or a really prominent teacher that could be a woman. Now, Venus rules the fourth house of home and family, and it also rules the 11th house of your friends. And so I'm wondering, is this you going, okay, I'm traveling back home to visit family, um, is it about you going, I'm reflecting on the past and what I believe about family and now uh, recognizing what I love about my roots and my history and my culture. You could be really loving, you know, going back and um, visiting where you grew up or uh, maybe traveling to a place where you're learning more about your lineage. Now, um, with Venus being connected to your 11th house, I could also see this as being like connecting with friends from the past. Um, and that 11th house getting thrown into the ninth where it's like you're traveling and reconnecting with a friend that you haven't seen for a while um, or reaching out to them and, and having like a, a back and forth with someone who you haven't seen. Uh, but nevertheless, as Venus is in your ninth house, I think it's going to give you the opportunity for hope and inspiration. I think that's the big key here. Um, and I'm definitely feeling like it's going to be really great for you emotionally and bringing more love um, and, and, and nurturing also into the transits over the next couple of weeks. Let's see what the cards have to say. Hopefully you get to go on a trip with your friends or you get invited somewhere. I think that's something else that could happen with the sextiles that are coming to your 11th. So what do the cards have to say for you? Oh, seven of cups. Um, what I like about Venus is that it's going to lean into whatever is pleasurable. So there can be a sense of being like, uh, I don't know, where do I want to travel to? Or, or what is it that I want to study? Or what is it that I believe in? And you're kind of like taking all the different options and kind of sampling things. The Seven of Cups makes me feel like there's many options on the table. So if you're deciding where you want to go to school, if you're deciding how you're going to launch your course, if you're deciding what it is that you believe in, you're in this period of leaning into what feels natural and what feels right. Um, not making too many quick decisions when it comes to relationships. Be, be mindful with jumping into things with Venus in the ninth house, jumping into commitments, jumping into lawsuits, um, although Venus is more pleasurable. But we want to make sure that we uh, suss out all the potential opportunities or options before we make a significant decision, especially if you're like visiting a place and you're like, I'm going to move here. No, feel it out first. <laughs> that's just Venus in your ninth house that's making everything feel kind of like a dream, okay? Good luck, Cancer.
We've got Leo and Leo rising. Uh, I can see that we are going to be having Venus going into Pisces in your eighth house. Um, so this is interesting. This, this can be very transformational, right? When planets go through the eighth house, it goes through some kind of shift. It goes through some kind of change. Transformation of values, passion, desire, or joint resources. Although Venus is kind of like a spoonful of sugar. So when it goes to your eighth house, there can be more sugar coming your way. <laughs> People may be more generous. Uh, you may have opportunities for just more passion and connection in terms of your uh, romantic life. Now, Venus rules natally your third house of communication, short distance trips, and, and uh, travel, and also rules your 10th house when it comes to your career and reputation. So I'm thinking for you guys, Venus through the 8th house is wonderful. You may have the opportunity to say, hey, I'm negotiating something. I'm negotiating terms or salary. I'm signing a document or a proposal to apply for a loan. Um, I am talking to um, a business partner or a boss about being able to have better benefits or being able to get a bonus um, and what you're getting from other people. So when I say transformation, it can mean that, you know, that is the change that suddenly you ask for it, you speak up, you talk about it, and then boom, it comes in. But it's also about the money that you're making somehow connecting to your career. So there can be a sense of also going, I'm raising my prices, I am... Uh, paying off debt. So in order to do that, I need to be charging more or it's all about like the give and the take with Venus in the eighth house. Um, there can be some intense stuff that can come up with relationships, but, but for the most part, I actually feel like the transits are okay um, because it's sextiling planets in your 10th house. If there are relationship changes, that's more so linked to Pluto getting ready to go into your seventh. Um, and it may be for those of you guys who are already going through some relationship changes, this real realization that uh, money can't buy happiness or that you can't stay with something physically, um, you know, if there's no love there. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And also uh, eighth house can be money owed. So there can be a sense of you, okay, you know, paying stuff off, doing your taxes, getting everything ready for the year ahead. And the card that I get for you is the five of swords. Um, so interesting. I wonder if this is going to be more so Venus is coming into a square with Mars. It hasn't happened quite yet, but we, we will see this. Uh, Venus will kind of pick up and she'll start kind of squaring Mars and Gemini. And that can be about like um, misunderstandings, especially with friends over money owed or money borrowed or uh, misunderstandings in regards to uh, whether or not you are more than just friends. Uh, when we see squares from the eighth house to the 11th house, that can definitely come up. Watch for um, misunderstandings and, and maybe saying things that you can't take back, right? The Five of Swords is uh, saying things that can really upset people and um, learning to put your weapon down, right? The, the Five of Swords doesn't want you to fight it. It doesn't want conflict. It wants you to take it easy um, and not add more fuel to the fire. So sometimes with Venus going through the Eighth House, there can be some jealousy, some heated exchanges, some passion, uh, but at the very least, it's going to be interesting. So let me know what happens, Leo. For Virgo and Virgo rising, um, you are going to be having Venus going through the sign of Pisces, and that is your opposite sign. So Venus is going through your seventh house. Now, when Venus goes through the seventh house, Venus is super happy there. So this is a good transit for you. It can be a blessing in regards to relationships. So for those of you who are partnered, it gets a little sweeter. For those of you guys who are looking, somebody might just show up. Venus rules the second house of other people, okay? And your spending power and possessions. It also rules the ninth house of higher education, philosophy, um, anything in regards to education, travel, um, culture, but it can be law and legal. It can be also about uh, publishing or teaching. So for Venus, which is about money going into your second house, it's, you know, what are you giving to other people? What are other people giving to you? You know, are people more generous? Do they give you gifts and flowers and things like that? Um, or is it going to be about you spending a little money on a relationship, right? And also a relationship that may require travel, um, or are you talking to somebody who is of the legal mind, right? Because keep in mind, Venus rules the ninth house. There can be significant mentors, teachers, um, and gurus that can come in, counselors that can come into your life right now as well. 
very soon you're gonna see Saturn go into your seventh house, Virgo. So there are some serious decisions being made about relationships here pretty soon. And I think as Venus goes through the seventh, for some of you guys, it might feel like a last ditch effort. Um, when it comes to making a decision about a relationship, which way it's gonna go, but she's gonna bring sweetness, okay? So for a lot of you guys, opportunities for romance, relationships, commitment, interest with other people, people who are investing in you, you may have to travel to these people. You may have to travel with these people. Let's see what the cards say. I'm really curious to see um, Saturn go into Pisces for you guys because for some of you guys, it's you're in the relationship and then you make the decision and you're gonna start seeing Saturn sextile the night. So it's yes, we're in a relationship. I will relocate. Yes, we're working together. You know, we're going to make it legal. Uh, yes, we are in love. We're gonna get married. That kind of stuff can happen. So what do the cards say for Virgo? Okay, I like it. Six of coins, give and take. Uh, what you put is what you give. And I think this is so true with Saturn getting close to your seventh house is having to do the work in relationships. And I like that Venus is gonna try in your south no the, the south node transit and sextile the north node because I feel like it's like learning how to communicate differently um, and being more optimistic and open to the future and not being focused so much on the past. But with this card, the six of coins, um, it talks about like what you put out there is what you receive. You're not doing it because you want something in return. You're doing this because you're actually wanting to do good. So you're like, I'm focusing on the positives of the relationship and trying to see the better in somebody. Um, but equally, if you're wanting to meet someone, you're willing to do the work and you're putting it out there. You're going to go through the motions of, okay, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go on a date. I'm going to try to meet people. I'm going to socialize. You know, I'm going to let somebody set me up. Um, and this is basically saying people will meet you halfway. So make the effort, right? Make the effort and other people will be willing to uh, spend time with you. And it might actually be something that you really enjoy. Good luck, Virgo. I like that transit for you. That's a good transit. All right, so we've got Libra and Libra rising. We've got Venus going through uh, Pisces in your natal sixth house, if you're a Libra rising. Uh, you and Taurus are gonna feel this transit the most because Venus rules your first house of your body and your appearance uh, and balance in relationship to yourself. Venus also rules the eighth house of change and transformation, okay? So as Venus goes into your sixth house, it's bringing sweetness to sixth house things. If you need to hire an assistant, if you need to get on top of like health and wellness and routine, if you wanna join a new um, gym, if you wanna join a new center, if you wanna get a trainer, if you are hoping to uh, catch up on some of your like health or doctor appointments, uh, that can be a wonderful time to do it with Venus in the sixth house. Um, smoother react interactions with uh, coworkers, and also it can be more pleasurable interactions with pets. Um, it can also be a wonderful time where you're just kind of feeling like you're putting more attention and more emphasis in being of service, your routine, your diet, and um, also just your work schedule. Saturn will be here soon, Pisces. <laughs> Pisces. Saturn will be here soon, Libra. Um, and when Saturn goes into the sixth house, I think it's going to be about you learning about your schedule and your routine and making more time for creativity and inspiration. It'd be wonderful for you to find a way to integrate health and spirituality together. So like doing laps in a pool, meditating on the beach, um, maybe going to um, a spa regularly, you know, anything that's going to help you kind of integrate more of that Neptunian energy while you're focusing on your daily routine. But Venus will bless you here. So if you're like, hey, I've been waiting to make changes in my health, okay, now's a good time to do it. If you've been doing it prior to Saturn going into that sign, you start to see the effects of this now. So it's something about beauty and uh, spirituality or beauty and fitness kind of go hand in hand. I'm a Libra rising and for me, it's been like I'm trying to find a day spa just so I can go and like soak um, and like use like saunas and stuff or um, trying to find like a a spa where they do um, uh, just like natural like treatments, like natural um, uh, facials or um, like ionic foot baths and things where you can soak your feet. So that might be something that can be really helpful for kind of breaking up your routine in the sixth house, okay? Uh, detoxing, especially because Venus has that connection to your eighth house. All right, so let's see what the cards say for you, Libra. Ha <laughs> ha! 
not surprised. I was waiting for it. I was like, please no. Um, the tower. Okay, so this is basically saying that there are things that have to change. Okay, and so Venus in the sixth house can also be things that are not healthy for you. Overeating, oversleeping, over drinking, um, over overdoing it, right? Because Venus can be about pleasure. And so I'm wondering, like, for some of you guys, is it that you aren't getting active enough? Is it that you are uh, super stressed out and you're working too much? Is it that you are getting too much screen time? So the tower coming up kind of says, like, that's it. That's the end of this. Like, this can't happen anymore. I, I would say this for all of the signs, but especially for, like, Leo and Libra, because Pisces in conjuncts your ascendance, you're going to really start feeling the Saturn transit a lot more. Um, and what this is basically saying for you is that there needs to be an end to bad habits. So whatever that habit is, get it out of your system now before Saturn shows up and uh, get, get ready, right? For you to just kind of clear all this stuff out. Tower can be a difficult thing to let go, but it's time to do it. Good luck, Libra. So we have Scorpio and Scorpio rising. We've got Venus that's moving through Pisces, a sister sign. So it's really great for you, Scorpio and Scorpio risings. Uh, Venus is moving through the fifth house, which is going to give you the opportunity to focus more on creativity, romance, date nights, love, children. Um, all of these things are really positive in your chart right now. You are going to be seeing that Venus will trine your sun, moon, or your rising through this transit. Um, Venus has her joy in the fifth house. She loves being there. It's so great. You're going to have a couple of great weeks of just really awesome date nights. If you're looking to meet somebody, you want to get out there. If you're in a relationship, you want to be really focusing on creating more intimate time together, having fun and creativity. So I think of like Venus in the fifth is, do you go to like a paint and wine night? Do you focus on having like a dinner and a movie? Do you go dancing? Um, do you do something that's going to be romantic, you know, by water? Any of these transits can be really wonderful. If you have children, children can be uh, really pleasant and uh, really sweet. If you don't, it can be a time where you're just surrounding yourself with younger people, um, but feeling very creatively inspired, especially anything that deals with design, art, film, um, and yeah, and, and music or um, even like poetry. That can be something else that comes up for you. Now, Venus rules your seventh house of relationships. So that's why those of you guys who are single, you might meet someone um, and it might be like suddenly unexpected, especially as Venus starts coming into a sextile with a North Node and Uranus. But by the same token, because you've got your seventh house Lord in the fifth, this can say for those of you guys who are in relationships, there can be a I love you or you're my person. And for some of you guys, um, especially when you start seeing the Mercury trines, some Scorpio and Scorpio risings may find out they're pregnant or that their partner is pregnant as a result of this transit. Um, but for the most part, it's interesting. Venus rules your 12. So there's also something very magical, very spiritual that's kind of going on um, in regards to you and your partner. I feel like it's about finding ways to be creative and romantic and kind of bring the excitement back into a relationship behind the scenes really, really needed for Scorpio risings right now uh, because you guys have so many planets in your fourth house and you just feel like you're just like locked at home and you're working and you're grinding and you're working through things and spending a little bit of time alone. So as Venus is starting to appear in Pisces, it's a really good omen that uh, just fun and creativity and romance can kind of come back online. Okay. Let's see what the cards say for you, Scorpio, Scorpio risings. Ooh, I like it. King of Wands. Um, so for, for the ladies, this can definitely be a connection that you're having with somebody. It is of the more sexual nature. That is the King of Wands. Um, and it can be a fire sign. So it can be like a Sag, Aries, or a Leo, um, or just somebody who's just a little bit more direct and fun and wanting to have a good time. Um, if you happen to identify more as the King of Wands with you personally, this might be feeling like just a little bit more little more sexy, a little bit more creative, wanting to have fun um, and really owning that, wanting to take action and, and go and have adventure and uh, focusing on what you're giving life to because that's what the wands do. Okay. So it's looking good for you, Scorpio and Scorpio risings. Let me know how that goes. Definitely plan some stuff, man. I mean, people, I haven't done the uh, horoscopes for February yet, but when Valentine's Day hits, Venus and, uh, and Neptune are going to be aligned in Pisces. Super, super romantic. So it's looking really, really good for the Scorpio Risings. Let me know. Have a, have a good one, Scorpio. 
All right, so now we've got Sag and Sag rising. We're taking a look at Venus's transit through Pisces. It's moving through your fourth house, which is actually quite sweet. Um, those of you guys who are looking for home, right? If you're looking for a home, if you want to buy property, if you're wanting to um, find the right place, if you're looking for uh, interior design stuff, if you're wanting to buy furniture um, and just bring more beauty into the home, right? Now is the time to do it. Because when Venus goes through the fourth house, she wants to bring more sweetness and kind of like cohesiveness and, um, and beauty in, into your home space. Venus rules your sixth house of health and pets and also um, wellness and assistance. And Venus also rules your 11th house of friends. So I'm wondering, are you Sagittarius like going to be hitting up a friend who is a real estate agent and saying, hey, help me find a house? Are you talking to a friend about moving in? Do you have a friend who has a lead to somebody who can help you organize or come in and design or paint your home? Are you gonna have a party in your house and invite people over and say, hey, like help me you know, paint this place and bring furniture in and like let's decorate or are you having a housewarming party? Any of these things could be happening. Having a, a, a woman in the home can be another theme that's coming and kind of visiting you as well. Um, especially because this is about good times. So you might be inviting people over because you're just so busy, you've been working so much that you're just like, okay, everybody come to me, I'll make dinner, let's get together. So peaceful, uh, beautiful times can be had at home throughout this transit. Very soon you'll have Saturn going into this part of your chart though. So it makes me feel like you're uh, really focusing on home, emotions, family, uh, mother kind of roots, things like that. So this may be the beginning process of you looking to improve some of those things before you make that commitment when Saturn shows up, okay? Great time for design though. And especially those of you Sag and Sag Risings who are like, I wanna be by water or I wanna buy a hot tub or I'm wanting to zen out my house or create a meditation room or feng shui my place. Great transit for that. I get 10 of wands. So it, to me, it looks like it might be a rather big project or that you're, you have the hope or the dream to be able to accomplish something and you're like, I wanna get it done, but you know that it's gonna be a lot. Um, so it may be a lot of heavy lifting to see this kind of come together, but right now you're more in the vision state of bringing it together. 10 of wands is about completing something and it does talk about like completing a project or seeing something all the way through and like getting to the end and being like, this has been a lot. So. Perhaps you get a little overwhelmed with the task at hand, um, but nevertheless, I would say stay with it, especially with Venus square Mars. It makes me feel like that you can have people who can help you see this all the way through and make your dream a reality, okay? Good luck. For Capricorn and Cap rising, um, you are going to be having Venus going through Pisces in your natal third house. So Venus in the third house is gonna bring sweetness in regards to how you communicate. So it's all about like sweet talk, love letters, uh, you know, positive feedback. You may be looking at um, getting a new gadget or maybe you're focusing on pl planning like a short getaway weekend trip. Maybe you're wanting to kind of beautify um, your car. <laughs> looking into how you can improve your vehicle, you're in, in, in kind of looking for, for buying something soon when Saturn shows up. So maybe you're sussing it out, asking yourself, do I want something, do I not? Um, Venus rules your 10th house of career and responsibility, public reputation, and it rules your fifth house of creativity. So at the very least, this will bring positive feedback from your superiors. You'll get like emails and comments and things just about how well you're doing at work and how you're handling things. If you're looking to be moving or if you're needing to communicate more with siblings or relatives, it should go rather, rather smoothly. Um, and I have a feeling that those of you guys who are wanting to get more serious about writing, journaling, blogging, podcasting, uh, this is also really sweet because Venus going into the third is going to sextile Uranus. Um, but for, for the most part, I think it's just about how you're communicating and bringing in more sweetness in terms of communication. If you have female relatives like siblings and stuff or cousins, you might be hearing more from them and just, just getting some sweet phone calls from people who are uh, communicating a little bit nicer, <laughs> more so nicely, which will be a nice kind of break considering you've had this retrograde in your sign. Um, and maybe now that you have had time to kind of rework and reflect something, now you're ready to kind of make peace with other people or communicate differently with people. 
and just let them know how much you care about them. That could be another way that this can kind of pan out for you as well. And adding more opportunities for spontaneity. If you're wanting to get out and do something and have some fun, that Venus coming into sextile with the North Node makes me feel like it's doable. So let's see what the cards say for you. Hopefully you get a, you get a love letter. <laughs> Queen of Cups. All right, cool. So uh, this is talking about um, definitely opportunity for, for romance. The Queen of Cups can be dreamy. It can be sensitive, intuitive. It can be a water sign that you're going back and forth with. So if you're a woman, you might be feeling like you're just more in touch with your emotions than usual right now. And you're acting a little softer and a little bit more open. Um, but it can be about a Pisces or a Cancer or a Scorpio coming into your life, helping you in some way work through something and get the point across or focus on something you're writing or trying to communicate. Um, but much more in touch with your intuition and your emotions. And I could see a lot of like Capricorn risings with Saturn going into your third house that you're also wanting to be journaling. You're focusing on talking and expressing your feelings more. Maybe you're working with like tarot or something that can kind of um, help you get more so in touch with your intuition by forms of working with your hands. So uh, tarot cards for divination while Saturn goes into your third can be a wonderful transit. So maybe you're looking at a deck. If you're looking at picking up a book or something, so you can learn more about those types of topics. Good luck, Capricorn. We've got Aquarius and Aquarius rising. Uh, I like this transit for you. You've got Venus in Pisces moving through your natal second house of money and resources. So this is all about abundance or spending power, but most importantly, it's about your self-esteem. So Venus going into the second house, she likes being there. Um, that's a house she's very comfortable with. Venus has associations with your fourth house of home and family, as well as your ninth house of law and the higher mind and belief system. As Venus is moving into the second house, this can be about you having to go through some documents or legal kind of process in regards to acquiring land, what you're owning, maybe family business. Um, but this can also be about you, you know, finding that you have the opportunity to have more spending power, bringing more money in, making more in resources. This money can be coming from education. It can be coming from a foreign land. It can be coming from publishing um, or it can be coming from home family business. So uh, regardless, if you have family at a distance that's wanting to kind of help you um, grow your wealth, you know, or family that you're living with, or if you're just looking at investing in property any of these things can be really positive throughout this transit. I'm especially really liking the fact that Venus is going to be sextiling the North Node and Uranus, which is your chart ruler. So maybe you know that it's coming and you're starting to get your money in order right before the spring when Jupiter goes into your fourth house. And you may be moving, you may be buying a bigger place, you may be expanding or improving your home. Um, but I see this bringing you more opportunities for abundance. So this is going to be a really nice transit, especially as Venus starts coming into a sextile with Uranus you're gonna find that there's sudden opportunities to just generate more income and feel more safe and secure emotionally about your financial uh, well-being, okay? So let's see what the cards say for you, Aquarius. Wonderful, four of wands. Uh, celebrating, um, getting together, happy occasions, and might be parties, gatherings, but four, right, home, four. So it is talking about like planning for um, the family, planning for your future, planning for your foundation. So maybe you're investing more money into your family, investing more money into your home for socializing get togethers. I've known a lot of Aquarius Risings that are like, I'm wanting to build a deck or I'm wanting to, you know, put a barbecue outside or a pool or I'm wanting to, you know, create more space so I can entertain and have people over and have fun. Um, and so this does talk about positive, positive things coming for your home, your family, and also for your resources. Okay, good luck. And we've got our Pisces who are like, pick me, pick me. I should have done you guys first, huh? One, one day you guys will be first. Maybe that's how we'll do the Saturn transit. Um, so obviously Venus is going through your sign if you are a Pisces, sun, moon, or rising, especially those Pisces risings. Venus on your ascendant, ooh. Take a picture, take a picture of yourself at some point. You can even do it when, um, when Venus comes into conjunction with Neptune, if you want to do that closer to mid-February. But Venus going through your ascendant, it's just bringing you more love, bringing you a little bit more beauty, focus on self-love, your image, your body. Um, and it, it, can, it can bring in some more sweetness, especially because Venus rules the eighth house of others. So other people can be more generous with you. They can be more giving. They're like, 
seeing you and your dazzling big Pisces eyes and they're like, here, take my wallet. <laughs> Um, but Venus also has connections to the third house. So for the third house and the eighth house Lord, I think you're getting a lot of compliments. I think people are commenting on, uh, statuses and posts. I think people are messaging you. I think people are responding to what you're, what you're writing, what you're saying out in the world. Um, and there's just more attraction to you, right? A lot of people are going to be more so drawn to you than usual. Um, Venus for you also in the first house is about kind of turning that kind of sexual energy on. So you might feel a little bit more provocative, especially in how you move and how you communicate with people. Um, and I think it's opening things up in your third house for you to start kind of thinking about um, how to communicate differently, how to kind of travel more often, how to kind of get more active and get more visibility. Um, if you're also doing anything in regards to the internet and being online. So you're gonna definitely generate a lot more traffic and have just a little bit more back and forth going on with others. But take photos, focus on self-love, any little tweaks you wanna be making to your appearance um, or your cosmetic routine, your clothes, any of that stuff. Pisces is very kind of flowing, right? It's kind of etheric. So there can be a sense of having a little bit more creative and flowy things that you're wearing right now, stuff that's gonna be a little bit more Piscean. Uh, so playing with uh, things that can be kind of like reflective in terms of like makeup or things that are a little bit more like, um, uh, like pearlescent uh, might be something that you do that kind of catches other people's eyes, okay? But yeah, great great transit for you with that on your ascendant, especially as it makes its way to Neptune. Definitely a great time to be taking pictures. And let's see what the cards say for Pisces. <laughs> Five of Wands? Are people fighting over you, Pisces? Um, it's interesting because I could see this as you being the peacemaker, right? Interesting, being the peacemaker, because really similar to the Five of Swords, but this is more combative. This is literally people who are having conflict, but as Venus sits on your ascendant, you're like, I am super zen. I'm not going to get involved. Um, but I'm wondering if this is because Venus is coming into a square with Mars, and this is like conflict going on at home or within the family, and you're just kind of like, okay, cool, calm and collected, trying to be like the peacemaker. I mean, reminding people how to speak with love and how to communicate more sweetly so you can diffuse situations. And you may feel things are a little bit chaotic or that um, you're a little bit overwhelmed with feeling like you have to respond to people. Five of Wands can be people kind of bothering you or trying to get your attention. So I'm wondering if this is gonna be you finding like classy, you know, more Venusian sweet ways of being like, don't call me, I'll call you. Okay, great, thanks. And just kind of sweeping people away who you might feel like are kind of overwhelming or kind of attaching to your energy, right? Eighth house Lord in your first. Uh, definitely an interesting time. Watch out for that and obviously be, uh, be a spokesperson for, for peace and harmony if you can. I don't think that's going to be difficult for you. Um, and you're starting to feel Saturn coming up on your ascendant if you're Pisces rising. So you're going to start noticing that there's this theme about focus and concentration and boundaries. That's going to be a big lesson for you here over the next couple of months. Okay. But for the most part, Venus going through the 12 signs, um, you know, Pisces going through um, all of the 12 signs, it's, it's going to be beneficial for everybody. And it's going to be a nice reprieve before we see Venus go into Aries. So enjoy it while you guys have it. Let me know how are you feeling with these transits? Where is it playing out in your chart? I would love to hear. Still, happy new moon. Happy you're on its direct. I'm sure things are going to go a little wonky today. It is what it is. Uh, enjoy the week ahead. I'll see you soon. I'm going to get working on um, February horoscopes in this next week. And we'll throw another video in there too. Talking about some of the other aspects uh, as we go ahead. And we march into February? What? Okay. All right, guys, enjoy your weekend or what's left of it, and I will see you soon. Take care.